Hello streaming aficionados, Peacock is here. Let's walk through the app together. Is a peacock anyway. Well, I'm not talking about the bird with the extremely obnoxious and the pretty feathers. No, 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 no. This is the Peacock app, the new streaming service from NBC Universal. And if you're wondering how I know what a peacock sounds like, it's because my high school was surrounded by a peacock farm. It was very loud every morning. I know, I know, I know another streaming service. I'm exhausted too. But this one is a big one. Specifically, it's because of what NBC Universal can offer you, which is a ton of iconic back catalog. You've got Cheers, Frasier, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Battlestar Galactica, 30 Rock, Parks and Rec. They are all here, with two huge exceptions, which we'll get to. So how much? Well, Peacock actually has a free option. There's no strings attached, so they say. It's a limited selection, but you can access the app without a credit card. You just need an email address, that's it. Peacock Premium is $5 a month and opens up more content. And then there's a super duper Peacock Premium Plus subscription that's full access, almost ad free, almost, and will set you back $10 a month. That being said, cool, cool. Let's walk through the app. I'm using an Apple TV. Here on the main Apple TV page for Peacock, I am going to open it. I'm ready. I've downloaded it. We're doing all the things. All right, so if I wanna sign up to watch for free, I can do that. I'm gonna sign in. Don't steal my password, nerds. And here it is, the landing page for the Peacock app on Apple TV. We are starting out on the Browse tab, which is pretty interesting considering the Channels and Trending tabs are the two tabs right before that one. Uh, and then of course you have your standard TV shows, movies, kids, news, sports, Latino, uh, all the things that you're used to seeing in a streaming platform app. Uh, so we've got 30 Rock. Let's look at the Browse section a little bit. Peacock Picks, okay. So we've got Downton Abbey, Everybody Hates Chris, Parks and Rec, Project Blue Book, I mean, there's a lot, again, lots of iconic, iconic shows, uh, but also some uh, stuff that maybe you haven't seen before, which is part of the reason why NBC Universal's library is so appealing to so many people. It is vast. Uh, featured films, Phantom Thread, love the Rotten Tomatoes integration here. That is really, really cool. Uh, so you can immediately decide if you want to watch something or not based on its Rotten Tomatoes score. Uh, and then you've got some originals. So Peacock actually has launched with a pretty limited selection of originals because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, production is not exactly booming right now. So I think we're gonna see a lot more here, but these are the Peacock originals that were able to make it into the app launch. So lots of different stuff. Binge 100 plus hours for free. So I really like these category names. I'm just now going through them for the first time. I think that is a great idea. This is to say, hey, you got a lot of time on your hands? We can fill it. And that is super smart on their part. I think Peacock is doing a really smart thing here by saying, look, it's free and it's over a hundred hours of this one show. Like here's, here's what you can watch. And it tells you how many seasons it has, you know, million dollar listing LA. If I want to watch a show and cry about how I'll never afford a house in proper Los Angeles. I can watch over a hundred hours of that. Yay. <sighs> then you have your true crime always on uh, road to Tokyo. So this is Olympic coverage. Don't forget NBC universal has the rights to the Tokyo Olympics. Um, yeah. So upgrade to watch it all. They tell you what you can upgrade to, uh, what you're missing out on as it were. Uh, Sci-fi, of course, you've got all sorts of really good categories here. Um, so that is the browse section. So if you're really looking for a huge back catalog, again, Peacock pretty much has you covered here. Uh, TV shows, obviously, we know what that means. Let's check out movies. You've got The Born Identity. Again, huge blockbuster films. They're going to want to put those up front and center here to show you how appealing their service is. Uh, in the kids section, you've got, again, lots of different choices. News, you've got that. 
Uh, so you've got your nightly news, you've got documentary, you've got headlines. So those are actually shorter, little sort of quick, I don't want to say quick bites because that's a quibby. Apparently that's taken now. So you're like sort of quick videos under three minutes or so that are going to give you sort of a little summary of a news story that's happening during the day. In the sports tab, they have these originals, uh, which I think is great. I think it's important to have sports originals. I love 30 for 30 on ESPN. Uh, so Peacock is going that same route. They're going to say, okay, we're going to also make originals. So we have this In Deep with Ryan Lochte. Um, we've got Lost Speedways with Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, Premier League, Top Sports Stories. Again, The Road to Tokyo, very important for them. Now that we're done with the sports tab, let's check out the Latino tab. There is a lot of interesting things happening in the Latino tab. So Peacock says it's launching with about 15,000 hours of content on its service. Uh, but 3,000 of those hours are Telemundo produced original programming. So you're going to find original Spanish language series here. You're also going to find your standard subtitled English language movies and television shows like Shrek. We can see it's right here, Fast and Furious. Um, but a really impressive outing for Peacock and its Spanish language offerings. And I'm really excited to see how much they continue to expand on that uh, in this tab. So nice job. Good job there, Peacock. Okay, so we've browsed all the different tabs. We know what they're about. Let's check out Channels. Channels is live broadcast in sort of by franchise or IP. And unfortunately, HDCP limitations are going to keep me from capturing uh, what is being broadcast right now, but we can look at the channels. So we've got Today All Day, SNL Vault, if you love Saturday Night Live, Office Shorts, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, if that's what you're into, Fallon Tonight, Seth Meyers Now, all sorts of stuff that you're going to be able to watch. And it's running all the time live. So it's not on demand. This is something that you'd be, you know, kind of waiting for. Here's the thing that's running. Now that we've seen channels, let's hit trending. The trending tab is a very interesting thing in Peacock because not only is it going to show you some brand new original series or movie that Peacock wants you to watch and get really invested in, uh, it's also going to show you clips from shows, from news uh, series, from you know, late night television. I mean, you're gonna see all kinds of content in here. And I'm really curious if Peacock and NBC Universal is gonna use this tab and curate it based on your specific viewing habits and the things that you're into, or if it's going to be sort of a general, here's what's trending in America right now, enjoy. Uh, but I guess time's gonna tell on that one, so who knows? I should mention, as an aside, if you open the Peacock app on your iPhone or on your phone, the first tab that it sends you to is the trending tab. It doesn't send you to the browse tab, which is an interesting choice. And it's very clear that NBC Universal feels like when you're on your phone, you're gonna want sort of things that are hot. Get me the information. I wanna just watch something quick and run. That's right there for you. They know that, they want you to go to that trending tab, but when you're watching on a television set, they want you to watch longer form content. So they're gonna put you up to the browse tab, which again, like that's, that's a really smart decision. There are a few things that aren't available in Peacock yet though, and here they are. One, no 4K support, yikes. Two, no profiles, which means you can't separate what you're watching versus someone else in your household. Some people really love that. I think it's an important feature and worth mentioning. And three, no support yet for Roku or Amazon Fire TV devices. So if you have one of those and you're hoping to check out Peacock, you're out of luck until further notice. So there you have it, a basic walkthrough of the main tabs and options that you have in the NBC Universal Peacock streaming service app. I think it's really compelling. I think NBC Universal offering a free account with no strings attached or trial period is brilliant, to be honest, because they're banking on everybody signing up. And then at some point, a percentage of those people going, 
this is worth $5 a month or I think this is worth $10 a month. And they're also hoping that you dump one of your other streaming services in order to pay for it. So uh, I think it's really smart. It's really, really smart because who among us has not signed up for a free trial of a streaming platform, watched whatever it is that everybody was talking about that week, we binged it, and then we we're like, well, I just, you know, I don't need, I don't need that subscription anymore. So really smart on their part. I think the UI is beautiful. Uh, I'm really looking forward to digging in deep and seeing what exactly is available to me as a free user and what is not available to me as a free user. We will see how that goes. Uh, I am very curious as to what you guys think of Peacock. Did you sign up? Are you gonna do it? Are you not interested at all? Are you gonna wait until maybe Olympic coverage ramps up or sports comes back? Uh, let me know down in the comments and until next time, be good streamers.